<clears throat> All right. No, not it's not live. No. So annoying. All right. So, um, good morning, my little nerds. I am Dr. Shereen Idris, a cosmetic dermatologist based in New York City, and welcome to my YouTube channel. I just brushed my hair. I dried my hair. I made another effort for you guys. Adele is clearly still playing on the radio at our house, um, hence the eyeliner. But I thought today... I wanted to dive into the world of self tanners. This past week, I did an Insta story where I, I guess it was a bombshell for many of you because the amount of messages I received when I said that self tanners can increase the rate at which we age was shocking. And so I thought to myself, clearly this is a topic that might need more addressing. And so let's dive in. These are some of the comments that you guys submitted on my Instagram. I'm going to pop them to cover my husband right here. Um, it's crazy how many of you guys did not know this. So I figured, why don't we start from A to Z with what in the world are self-tanners? First of all, <clears throat> before we jump in, tanning became the thing of the day back in the, I guess it was 20s and 30s when bathing suits sort of came into play. I myself am the fairest, palest, pastiest person in my family. My oldest sister practically looks Indian and we have the same mom, same dad, same genetic makeup, or so I think. I mean, we'd have to ask my mom, but um, no, total joke. <laughs> my mom, if she watches, this is gonna kill me. But it's like I'm five to six shades lighter than my oldest sister and probably three shades lighter than my middle sister. And growing up, the color of my complexion has always been basically the joke among my family like where did she come from because we're not as pale and so i have always had an insecurity about my pastiness it's true i used to burn when i was younger because i thought if i burn i could get a color and i could look like my siblings i true story um i would try self tanning booths where they would spray us i never did tanning beds because i think thank god i was a little bit more savvy than that but a lot of people out there still use tanning beds which is a discussion for a whole other day i have learned to embrace my pastiness okay my legs however still freak people out because they're practically fluorescent so i have to adjust the leg situation one day i'll show you guys what i do but for the most part self tanners have been a part of my life since i can remember so what exactly are they they are dihydroxy acetone okay DHA is how I'm going to refer to them moving forward. On average, they're located, they're located, they're at a percentage anywhere between two to 5% um, in any solution. At its core, it is a colorless solution. It's actually made up of three carbon sugars that reacts with free amino acids in your epidermis and the keratin within your epidermis, more specifically within the stratum corneum. So if your epidermis is the top layer of your skin and the dermis is below it, the stratum corneum is the uppermost layer where all of the dead skin cells lay and are about to slough off, all right? And that reaction basically induces what is known as a, and I'm going to say it the French way because I don't know how to say it the American way and I'm not trying to be annoying, but the Maillard, Maillard reaction, okay? Maillard, Maillard. Actually, let's see if Master Maillard or Maillard was French. Please hold. He's French. So if I say Maillard reaction, I am not incorrect. All right, and that reaction is the same thing as when you toast your buns, legitimately your buns in the oven, if you like a crispy hamburger, or if you toast your toasty marshmallows. It is all the same. So technically, when you are applying a self-tanner on your skin, you are toasting yourself minus the damage of the sun. And how does that happen? Like I said, it's a chemical reaction between the amino acid in the keratin within the top layer of your skin, the stratum corneum, and that turns brown into melanoidins, okay? And these brown melanoidins appear brown because they absorb the wavelength of the sun and the light at a certain level, and they reflect a brown discoloration. And during this time, as that reaction is taking place, you do notice a certain stinkiness to it. My husband, whenever I do it, tells me I smell, what do you tell me I smell like when I self-tan? Cornflakes. Cornflakes. Although I don't know, I, cornflakes kind of smell good in my opinion. I've worked in labs and it smells like uh, like the mice in the lab. Like, like that's the scent I actually think of. And 
that odor actually takes place because of the chemical reaction happening underneath. And no matter which DHA formula you're using, they all produce this telltale sign or smell because it's a reaction that's happening and they need that reaction in order to make the color. And so by default, that smell is going to come off. Now, some products have masking odors, uh, fragrances to help make them disappear, but ultimately at their core, they all have a stank. And your skin becomes permanently stained. No soap, no water, nothing is going to get rid of it. Scrubbing can definitely make it appear lighter, but ultimately those superficial dead layer skin, dead cells of your skin are going to have to come off and slough off. And any brand that tells you, oh, our tan lasts over a month, they're lying because that superficial layer on average takes anywhere from like seven to 10 days to kind of slough off. So a self tan is going to last approximately a week. Or so, so let's talk about the application of self tanners for a very quick second. Everyone knows how they apply it. I actually don't really know how to apply it despite me having tried it for many years. I still get streaky. Um, People say you should exfoliate first, you should make sure your skin is very dry, you should buffer it around areas where you have folds like your wrists, your elbows, your joints, etc. Um, I will say though, a very interesting observation that I have noticed throughout my patients and myself is the keratin is what absorbs the DHA. In areas where the keratin is less dense, the color is going to be less intense. Now, in areas where you have more keratin, so your solar lentigos or your seborrheic keratoses, which are basically the barnacles of life, that DHA is going to be concentrated and appear darker. So when you put self-tanner on your face, it's going to pick up all of your sunspots and you are going to look even spottier. So that is a side note that I tell my patients all the time. If an even complexion is your goal, be aware of self-tanners because they're going to make your brown spots appear worse. So let's get into the juicy stuff. Wolverton came out. My other textbook, which I actually put downstairs, came out as well. My fingers were on PubMed and I printed out a laundry, a laundry list of research to back up what I'm about to say. And I have my computer right here with all of my notes. And that's why I keep looking down because I'm referring to them because I don't want to mess up what I'm about to say and I want to make sure it's very, very clear. Self-tanning does indeed age your skin. It is a known fact, all right? And let's understand why. Number one, it increases the formation of free radical productions. Through that Maillard reaction, which I just described earlier, right? Toasting buns, caramelizing onions, creating a nice char on a steak, or roasting marshmallows, you're basically roasting your skin through self-tanners. You're doing it without the actual infliction of UV rays. It's happening on its own, but it's inevitably still happening. And what does that mean? So the Maillard reaction generates what's called Amadori products. And Amadori products generates free radicals during UV radiation. So although the Maillard itself is not causing free radicals, these Amadori products are. And how does that happen? Amadori compounds act as a precursor to advanced glycation end products, the acronym of which ironically is AGES, A-G-E-S. And this all contributes to the premature and accelerated damage that you get from the sun, photoaging, brown spots, and breakdown of elastin, and collagen, meaning your fine lines and wrinkles and crepey skin is gonna appear faster. And I don't know about you, but whenever I use a self-tanner, my skin does feel kind of a little bit dried out and dehydrated. It's weird, it happens. A lot of them add hyaluronic acid to give you that temporary plumping effect when you first use it, but ultimately I feel like my skin looks worse when I use self-tanners over time. Um, another interesting study, they found that when you go out into the sun after applying self-tanners in DHA-treated skin, more than 180% additional radicals were generated during sun exposure compared to untreated skin. That means that the amount of free radicals formed were nearly doubled. That means the rate of aging is nearly, unfortunately, doubled in the areas that you're using self-tanners. So accelerated skin aging and DNA damage the free radicals released by DHA do ultimately cause that oxidative stress, which we know can contribute to skin aging. 
fine lines, hyperpigmentation, sagging, you name it, it's there. The perfect killer trifecta, triple threat. Third, skin irritations. Those can happen with anything. This is not particularly um, by any means reserved specifically for DHA. You can have skin irritations from basically anything. But for some people, self-tanners may be the main culprit behind skin irritations and the weakened skin barrier. Just an FYI. And number four, your vitamin D production does go down when you use self-tanners. So if you're already wearing sunscreen and avoiding the sun and just using self-tanners, you have to be aware about your vitamin D levels and you may need to take a supplement. This leads me now to spray tans. Spray tans are a whole other beast because we're talking about DHA applied onto one organ, the skin. Now, what happens when you inhale DHA and it affects another organ like your lungs? And this is where it can get dangerous. And the FDA has warned against the use of spray tanning booths, especially in people who work in these salons because they're doing like 10, 15, 20, 30 treatments a day and who knows how much they're inhaling. So copious amounts of DHA, and I'm talking about people who work literally in tanning booths, have to be, be have to be careful. You have to be careful with because it can affect your lungs and it can lead to lung toxicity over time. And we don't know what other sort of side effects. So regarding spray tans, it is a very interesting topic because spray tans are obviously safer than tanning beds. And I'm talking about the spray tans in the booth. But the concern over the safety of spray tans illustrates something that honestly every consumer should know, which is just because a product is available doesn't make it safe. Okay? I live in New York City. I have seen people sell crystal meth on the side of the street. It doesn't make it safe. Spray tans in a booth are not necessarily safe. But like with anything, it's the dose that makes the poison. So don't freak out if you've done it. I just want you to know that you probably should take a little bit of a step back if you overdo it. And if you do decide to go into the tanning booths with spray booths, I mean, um, the spray tanning booths, I, can't, I have a lisp again. <laughs> Basically, make sure you cover your nose and you close your mouth and your eyes and you make sure you do not inhale while that machine is on. That's all. That's pretty much what you can do to help yourself. Um, and also, if it's thought to be safe when used on one way, for example, on the skin, that doesn't mean that it could be safely used in other things. For example, we can all ingest jalapenos, but do you really want to put jalapenos on your skin? No. We can actually use DHA safely on our skin, but do we really want to inhale it? No. The vehicle is as important as the actual product itself. So that is my big red flag when it comes to DHA and self-tanners. It's actually the spray tanning booths in which you are actually inhaling it um, inside and into your body. So <clears throat> what about DHA-free self-tanners? Well, they're usually made of erythrulose. And erythrulose is basically a byproduct, I think, of like raspberries, if I'm not mistaken. And they also cause free radical production as well. So it's going to accelerate your aging process too. It's a nice marketing gimmick, but is the end product the same? Pretty much. So do I still recommend self-tanners despite all of this? The answer is oddly yes, but in moderation, like with anything. Do I want you to drink 30 gallons of water a day? No, obviously not. Do I want you to self-tan every single day? No, I don't want you to self-tan every single day. Do I want you to tan from a bottle? Yes. And here's a tip. If we're worried about these free radical productions, why not cover our bodies with an antioxidant-based body cream first? I'm going to give you two that you can use. One is Gold Bond. Simple. They have a restoring body lotion with vitamin C and I think kiwi extract. It's eight bucks. Put that first, allow it to dry, and then use the self-tanner. That's at least going to minimize the amount of damage that's formed. Number two, if you don't want to buy that, you can buy, for example, the Inky List has for $7 a Q10 serum, which is an antioxidant serum. It is a little bit, goes a very long way. I will show you guys. It is a thick one. And literally, you guys put this everywhere first and then apply. Literally, I just covered my neck and I could probably play it down to my chest. Very little goes a long way. It's only seven bucks. And each time you want to self-tan, use that first to protect your skin from the damage that self-tanners can create, which are the free radicals, which are not as bad as sun damage, but not great for aging. So if you want to help yourself, use an antioxidant first. Um, spray tannings from a booth, do I recommend those? Nope. I've given those up a very long time ago and I don't think they're worth it. Um, best to avoid. So which self-tanners do I like? I've done a lot of them. I've used 
actually a whole shit ton of them. I think Jergens has a nice one and it has an instant kind of glow. I think Tan Lux has a spray and I actually have it here, their water spray. It's nice. I hate their drops because I've tried it on my face and I, I applied it inconsistently and my patient throughout who I saw at the end of the day looked at me and she was nice enough to be honest and said what's wrong with your temples they look hollowed out it turned out I had only tanned here and my face looked like it was caving in so I've quit the tan drops um I love Clarins they have a gelée which is a gel based self tanner and finally Saint Tropez is another product that I really like when it comes to self tanners and in conclusion nothing is perfect water can be toxic but you have to measure, you know, the risk versus the benefits. If you're somebody who is addicted to tan skin, I think self-tanners are safer than the sun and tanning beds for sure. But if you're somebody who can moderate yourself and kind of keep it at bay and do it in moderation, then you are the one who's winning. Personally, I only use them before I wear any sort of skirts on my legs because my legs are way too white or before I go to the beach because I don't like to have the PTSD that I had from a kid of being made fun of because I'm so pale. Um, and when I go to the beach, I slather with sunscreen. That is the final tip of this. Self-tanners are in no way a um, replacement for your sunscreen. They're not going to offer sun protection. You have to wear the sunscreen, especially to minimize the free radical formation and to protect your skin. It's not going to protect your skin. It's not going to give you your natural tanning factor, SPF factor. It's not, it's just not the case. I've read that somewhere and I nearly... On that note, I am your pale and pasty AF cosmetic dermatologist, Dr. Shereen Idris, who occasionally self-tans, but knows I might be aging a little bit faster in the process. And therefore, I pre-treat with antioxidants and I make sure to wear the sunscreen afterwards. And I do it in moderation while avoiding tanning spray booths. And that, my friends, is the conclusion of this video. I hope you guys have a great and beautiful Saturday.